Hello everybody, it's the 24th of January 2015, it's Dan here from Essex United Kingdom. So I've not uploaded a video for a while due to the fact that there's not been a huge amount for me to show and I've been very busy with certain things. So what I was going to do today is show you how we're getting on. Now as you know, frost resistant banana plant, this is a Japanese variety. Now you can see this is what it will look like after it's been zapped a few times. Now this looks absolutely terrible, it looks very sad and he doesn't look like he's got much life in him but uh, he will spring to life, won't be long. He does start to recover but then another little frost comes along and this is what you get but uh, not a problem because it grows back every time. So I'll show you what we got here. Now this is some citrus. You can see that's been well covered up, no problems there. Of course, I really do not want to lose this citrus at all because a dear friend who grew this from seed for me. Now here, this again looks rather pathetic here. This is an avocado, but uh, this will bounce back. This is what they tend to look like after they've been covered up. I've got to give this some water, but this will be okay as well. Keeping that covered up under there, protect it from frosts. And of course in the tunnel here, got the Chinese cabbages and carrots and a little bit of kale, not kale sorry, Swiss chard here. Strawberries not looking great but at this time of year this is what you expect. And here we have the beds all ready to be grown in next year. Peach tree, dormant, hang on. In fact, I don't know if you can see that there. You can see that it's got something on it. That bud. I don't think it's going to be long for this now. But uh, peach trees tend to peach trees tend to flower quite early in the year due to the fact that they're not real well they're certainly not native to this country the country that they are <clears throat> the countries that they come from or at least thrive in Mediterranean countries for example they tend to get uh, warmer weather earlier on in the season so of course if you've got a peach tree outside this is why you have the associated problems you know peach leaf curl um, frost damage to the blossom and things like that but uh, choosing to grow this inside and I'm really hoping to produce a decent crop of peaches. This is variety Dixie Red. I do like uh, peaches and of course if you've only got room for one tree in your garden I wouldn't necessarily recommend a peach because you know not guaranteed success and a leaf, peach leaf curl is a very nasty thing. Uh, my long-term viewers may remember uh, what happened to one of my Avalon pride trees, it uh, just had a leaf curl and I had to take it out. Okay, now this bit down here, this is going to be where I'm going to grow my melons. Now, people may remember that uh, I put some cardboard down, creating a, a no-dig bed here. Now, you can see this on the top here, this is all compost. And the cardboard underneath, see a little bit of it here, look, well and truly breaking down into the ground. We can thank uh, the winter partly for that and obviously the wet and things like that. So this shows really that you don't, people are asking me if you need to wet it. Well, in winter you really don't because you will get the rain, frost, etc. And once the worms get in there. So going to be putting melons in here, probably going to put up some sort of uh, small little greenhouse things. I mean, I do have the polytunnel here as you uh, definitely can see. I'm gonna grow some in there, but uh, this gets a lot of sun. So with a little bit of protection, should be able to produce a decent amount of melon plants here. I'm going to have a go at uh, watermelons. As you know, I managed to produce these successfully last year. Watermelons, honeydew melon, and maybe a few cantaloupe melons. So it's all uh, interesting. There is this thing that you can't grow melons in the UK, but uh, you can with a little bit of thought. We've got some great vines here. This is... Lake Mont Seedless, very, very good variety to grow in the UK. If you can grow some Lake Mont Seedless, if you've got the space, I'd certainly recommend it. I mean, look at this look. The strange weather we've been having, a little blackberry here, and it's put out green growth in January. Very strange. 14 degrees it's apparently going to get up to today. 
we've had uh, a few frosts here certainly not as many as we would come to expect for this time of year now of course we've got the home grafted trees so you may remember that there was a cherry plum here an old stump which I took out the tree was long dead took the stump out and uh, put my home grafted winter king tree in and uh, this has been a success my long term viewers will know that uh, I do like some grafting and we'll probably have another go at it this year I'm keeping an eye out on the uh, the Stephen Hayes Fruitwise channel. I've stated it before, but everyone should uh, have a look at the Stephen Hayes Fruitwise channel. It's very informative. It's about a man who runs uh, an amateur orchard, I believe in Southampton, somewhere like that. But uh, certainly check out his channel. I've uh, had a lot of a lot of inspiration and a lot of knowledge I've gained from his channel. So check that one out. Not to mention the fact he was kind enough to send me the signs for grafting two years running. Now, this one here is Lord Lambourn home grafted once again this one here was winter king <coughs> excuse me doesn't look the tidiest union but that will close this is one of my bargain trees I got from Aldi this is a royal gala <coughs> apple tree the tree, tree looks rather pathetic to be honest but uh, had about seven apples off it one year which I'm very surprised about pair onward I was given this by a, a friend of mine very nice specimen I've uh, decided to fan it up against this warm fence panel and we have a kiwi <clears throat> hoping this is going to do well this is a south facing fence so it gets very warm in the summer this is uh, one of my grapevine cuttings Lake Mont Seedless some things in some pots, I've got to tidy this up this year fruity grapes, I didn't put this vine in so I don't know what it is but black fruity grapes seeded variety, very tasty though see now this is the importance of uh, growing stuff for the winter now of course this is not, uh, this is, won't be much uh, longer in the ground, this is a spinach plant but uh, I have, we're still managing to get spinach off it. We've got some, uh, so we're going to be using some spinach for, for dinner today. <coughs> Excuse me, moi. So here, a lot more spinach. Spinach is a great thing to grow, very nutritious, particularly easy to grow. And apart from slugs, things seem to leave it, or leave it alone. A few little carrots left. I mean, these are baby carrots, they're not amazing, but they're okay. Blueberry plants. You may remember that uh, I had some blueberry plants that were um, starting to produce buds, which is very strange for this time of year. But uh, look, still got a few little flowers on. But these, is, I don't think these are going to be long now. If you look at them, the buds are really beginning to swell. I do love blueberries. I really do. I'd love to be able to have a big patch of land with like 50 blueberry plants on. And here we've got leeks. I've still got a decent amount left. Leeks are once again, <coughs> you have to excuse me, I keep clearing my throat. I've had a bit of a cold lately. These really are a good thing to grow once again because they're frost resistant I mean we did have a hard frost down to about I think it was minus three around here minus five something like that which is certainly not cold compared to certain areas of the world but in the UK at least this part of the UK we don't tend to get to particularly cold winters I'm glad to say but uh, they, they, they can withstand that and uh, great thing to grow very nutritious nice tasting and here this is some curly kale that we had, no not curly kale, sorry, this is just standard kale that we had growing away in pots. This one is curly kale. Purple sprouting and broccoli looks starting to produce heads. So you put these in, you can have brassicas in pots, so people with very tiny gardens or people who are disabled, you can look at growing 
things in pots like this or raised beds and you can still get some of your own produce which is great. Here is another bargain fruit tree. This Cox Orange Pippin got it a few years ago from uh, Aldi's. I think it was about four pounds and uh, still got a few bits on from last year but that's obviously useless now. But um, this produces about seven or eight apples and because the uh, tree is so small but I still think that's quite good and this tree will grow the only downside is just because I got it from uh, Aldi's it doesn't say what the root stock is but it doesn't really matter nice little graft or bud union whatever you want to call it but uh, it does produce some quite nice tasting apples so we're just looking up into the canopy of the mulberry tree I've uh, stated this before this is a very mulberry if you've got a big garden and you want to long-term plan mulberry is a great one to grow because if you grow mulberry then you're looking at uh, a tree that can live for hundreds of years unless some idiot comes along and cuts them down and um, you get lots of fruit I mean I think this produces fruit for about five to six weeks of the year they all ripen over a gradual period and that's a great thing to have because whereas with something like plums, if you've got one tree, you tend to get them all at once, at least in my experience. But with this, you get you get them over an extended period of time and uh, you just have to wait for it to come into fruit, which does take a, quite a long time. I think this tree took a good 10 years before it was, you know, really fruiting heavily, but uh, certainly worth, worth the time and the wait, in my opinion. So that's just a brief update on uh, what's going on so obviously we're hoping for a decent year but uh, the strange weather that we've had had a very warm December um, up to 17 degrees some days January has been a little bit uh, <clears throat> colder but certainly not as cold as it could be so and as you can see certain things like the blueberries are starting have started to come to life already so who knows what it's going to be because a lot of uh, most well nearly all of the fruit trees we grow in the UK require a period of dormancy so whether they've had a, a good enough period of dormancy of course is another matter but we will see how things go and we can just uh, hope for the best really and have a have a look and hopefully this will be a good year so I hope this has been a, a nice sort of update for you I hope everyone out there is doing well and uh, here's to a good year and a good harvest take care and uh, we will speak soon